Well, good morning, people. Uh, not doing much at the moment, but I'm probably going to have to go get electric and gas before long. Out there in the uh, the shithole weather that I've got right now. And the uh, COVID-1984 bollocks that's going on. But of course you haven't come here to find out about my electric and gas. No. Um, I wanted to give out a bit more in regards to the news that I've been hearing as of late. And obviously to gently push out some more content. As I said, I'm not going to be doing this like every single day like I used to or every few days or every week or whatever. It's more likely, as I said, it's going to be more likely at least four weeks before I push out more videos. But there was three articles that I looked up that have actually piqued my curiosity. Um, there's one that's from July, admittedly. about I think it was the 25th of July, so about three months ago now. And there's one that was two weeks ago, and it's in regards to a lot of people's uh, lovable scamp known as Tommy Robinson. But first I'll go over the Diversity Built Britain 50p Coins. <laughs> I say that and I, f I, f I, feel, I feel dirty when I say it. Diversity Built Britain. But I've got the article up, and this is from four days ago. And I know there are people who've probably already done this. I know we've got a problem has always been very hot on these kinds of topics, which exposes the bullshit from these fake politicians, as it were. But I'm merely going to be reading from an article. I'm not going to be taken from his content, because... What's the point? So, new diversity built Britain 50p coins will enter circulation next week. So I'm guessing this week, but I could be wrong. Uh, the new coin signal the intent to include a wider range of people on coins and notes in the future according to the Treasury. Around 2.5 million coins celebrating the profound contribution that minority communities have made to the UK shared history will be released into circulation on Monday. I wonder if the uh, the profound contribution is uh, something to do with the uh, grooming gangs that have been operating around Britain of a certain particular religion, shall we, shall we say. You know, the, uh, the religion of peace. <laughs> Uh, religion of peace. Yeah, my ass is a religion of peace as well. Though at least that thing usually doesn't do too much in regards to uh, crimes against Britain. <laughs> but I digress. The new 50p signal the intent of the Royal Mint and Chancellor Rishi Sunak. Hmm. Definitely a profoundly British name then. To include a wider range of people on coins and notes in the future, according to the Treasury. The coin features the words Diversity Built Britain and the Geodome representing connection and strength. If it was me personally, I probably would have put on the coin that Diversity Raped Britain. But hey, that's just me. Uh, their design was created by Dominique Evans, who had previously designed coins to mark VE Day, the Sapphire Coronation, and Jane Austen. It was inspired by Miss Evans' own personal experience growing up as a mixed race woman. Again, I wonder if, if she found out about the grooming gangs that have operated in God only knows how many cities out there. Telford, Rochdale, Peterborough, Blackburn, uh... Manchester, just to name a few. I wonder if she found out about those, if she would actually be more inclined, or probably more appropriately, less inclined, to actually build this coin and say that diversity built Britain. But hey, some people live in ignorance, I guess. Mr. Sunak commissioned the coins earlier this year uh, following discussion with the We Too Built Britain movement. 
uh, campaign side, which works for fair representation of minority communities' contributions across all walks of life. I find that very hard to believe, to be honest. Chancellor said, I've seen firsthand the contribution made by ethnic minority communities to Britain's history. That is why I built the We Too Build Britain campaign and requested that the Royal Mayor introduce this coin to celebrate it. Why do I feel like when I read that, I feel like it's more they threatened that there would be riots or something. Obviously, this is speculation at this point, but you, you ever get that feeling when you read something and it appears factual, but you just think to yourself, there is no way that can be realistic. Because that's the vibe I get from that, to be honest, that one... That one paragraph which they wanted to introduce it. <clears throat> I just, yeah, it's just, it pisses me off thinking that they would willingly ignore the rape of Britain that we have gone through. Just for the sakes of bringing this feckin' coin in, I swear to God. Of course, we live in a country, though which actively supports these bullshit lockdowns, which thinks that the lockdowns have actually done anything, but I'll get onto that in a moment. I'm trying to remember where I was now. Uh, this coin and the rest of the series will act as a fitting tribute to the very profound impact of ethnic minorities made on Britain, and I'm grateful for the, to the Royal Mint for turning this around at record speed. As Evan said, when designing this coin, I began by thinking about the people who inspire me and what diversity has meant in my life. I believe that no matter where you are born, we are all belong under the same sky, and this has a starting point of the sign. Well, I'll tell Miss Evans this much. Not everyone is the same. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Do I think we need to support each other? Yeah, I think I do. I think we do. But we also need to highlight the flaws of certain ideologies such as that of the religion of peace and I would recommend Miss Evans that you actually do a little research in regards to the religion of peace because I can assure you these people have not exactly embodied Britain's values. In fact a lot of these Islamic pricks that come to this country have only a few purposes in this country. Not everyone's like this, but you'll find that I think it was like 84% of all grooming gang crimes were committed by Muslim men. Now that can't be a coincidence. And hell, this was something that was stated by Quilliam. You know, that uh, anti... Was it anti-Muslim think tank? No, it was a Muslim think tank. Just Muslim in, in general. So... If that's what a think tank is thinking, and not somebody like me, or Tommy Robinson, or Avi Yemeni, or any other person that would be considered far right is saying this, what do you think that says about the religion of peace? Be, feel free to send a, your answer on a postcard to me, Miss Evans. Anyway, uh, the background of the coin features a geodome with a series of interconnecting lines and triangles from an, that form a network. Each part is equal and symbolizes a community connection and strength. I've already made my point clear about uh, the shit I disagree with. The design also looks to the future and the bonds which will continue to grow and make us stronger. Boris Johnson said congratulations to Dominique Evans, the designer of the Royal Mint's 50 pence coin, Diversity in Britain. I mean, Boris Johnson has also been a complete feckin' failure, if you ask me. Her design is the first in this series of coins the Mint will be producing, celebrating those who have helped shape our national history and culture. I had the great pleasure of welcoming Dominique to a cabinet meeting along with Anne Jessup, the first female deputy master of the Mint and Blondel Clough, CEO of the West India Community of the Mint. I think a lot of this is just a load of crap after that, to be honest. I mean, all this is, is just basically a load of uh, globalist diversity and inclusion 
bullshit and bollocks that nobody is interested in. Nobody in the UK with more than half a brain cell is interested in hearing about the diversity and the fucking inclusion of other communities, to put it bluntly. And I certainly would think, because of the fact that the government and the police have actively tried to cover up the grooming gangs in the UK, and have only begrudgingly given us reports on some of the the true extent of these rape gangs in Britain. So, if they're willing to hide this shit from us, why... How how are they supposed to g gather our trust, garner our trust, if this is how they're going to act all the time? I think this woman, Miss Evans, and the other people who are responsible for building this 50 pence coin should have really taken a huge look into the Muslim grooming gangs. And maybe then they'd actually understand that maybe diversity and inclusion shouldn't be the priority right now. But hey, I guess some people just don't have that common sense, do they? We live in a world these days where common sense is a rare resource. And only a small number of people are born with this aspect of common sense built in. <clears throat> and I know a particular someone right now who would be seriously pissed off if they found out that I was making a video like this actually pointing out these rape gangs. God, nothing like cracking open a cold one. Anyway, the next article I wanted to go on to, if I can bloody find it. Ah, uh, yes, this one. So, this was back in the, uh, the 23rd of July, not the 25th, like I thought. <clears throat> but there was a, uh, a, a research study that showed that lockdowns don't work. Lockdowns don't work, study claims. Researchers stay at home at ho sorry. Researchers say stay at home orders make uh, made no difference to coronavirus deaths around the world, but prior health levels did. So I guess I shouldn't have eaten all those burgers, should I? <laughs> anyway, dozens of countries have been forced into lockdown to curb the virus spread. But now a study has claimed that drastic, the drastic measures don't even work. Instead, the health of each na nation before the pandemic largely played a role. Obesity raised death rates by 12%, which may explain high, Britain's high death toll. And to be honest... I made this point apparent when I was on my old channel, but there was somebody named Politico who actually came out and did his research and actually showed evidence that, for example, in Italy, their death rate figures were inflated by nearly 900%. So basically, let's say... It was like 9,000 people had died in Italy from the coronavirus. And then it turns out that it was overinflated by 900%. Basically, only 1,000 people really died from it. That's the extent of how, how much our lying fake stream media and these politicians... This is how far they will go to cover up the truth. They are willing to flat-out lie. Just to make sure people like you live in fear. And you know what's also really funny? Going off on a tangent slightly. That face mask that I have. It turns out there was also research done to that as well. In, wha in which ordinary people and some medical ex experts had tested out the masks. And it doesn't stop all of the air particles coming out. You can still breathe heavily through the mask. And for example, someone who had smoked a cigarette before. They smoked a cigarette, put the mask on, started breathing. The smoke was still coming through the through the mask. What does that tell you? 
the masks aren't effective. So there, ne there needs to be much better face masks only for medical carers. They're the only real ones who need it because of the, the people who they're dealing with who have been at risk of COVID-1984, the ones who have genuinely been infected. If they had a proper M95 mask, maybe that would help. I'm not saying it would help, because it could be completely wrong. But it would certainly be a damn sight better than those piece of shit surgery masks that we are wearing as of late. Now back onto uh, the article. Lockdowns have not had a big impact on the coronavirus death rates around the world, scientists have claimed, and health of nations beforehand was more important. Dozens of countries have been forced to tell people to stay at home and close shops in a bid to stop the COVID-1984 scamdemic. I am not going to be calling it a pandemic because we all know it's a load of crap at this point. Since it broke out in January, but now a study has claimed the drastic measures didn't even work. They found that whether a country was locked down or not was not associated with death rate. Levels of obesity and the amount of money people had were two of the most influential factors for a country's death rate, the study claimed. High levels of obesity, which more than 30% of adults seriously overweight, were linked to a 2%, sorry, 12%, I can't read quite clearly, were linked to a 12% increase in the number of deaths per million people. And this is if we were to believe that those numbers are factual. Because for all I care, they could be bullshit as well. The average age of people who had significant impact on the death rate as well... Uh, oh, no, they... No, it just says the average people... I can't even get the words out. But I'm not restarting the take, because... I always did do my content raw. The average age of people had a significant impact on the death rate too. Countries with a median age, which means half of people are older and half of people are younger, of 40 or above, had significantly more deaths. A graph in the paper showed that countries with a me median age of 40 suffered more than 150 COVID-1984 deaths per million people. Again, if these figures are actually meant to be believed. Compared to fewer than 25 per million for those who, were me who their median average was below 30. And a lower average income pus pushed the per million fatality rate up by 3%. This was measured against a m middling income of 23 thousand one hundred and twenty two dollars or in British terms eighteen thousand one hundred and seventy three pounds once again I will emphasize the point if this is supposed to be believed because for all I care as I said it could be a crock of shit the data could explain why countries such as Britain with one of the Europe's one of one of Europe's worst obesity rates and Italy which has a high average age have had such a high death toll despite tight regulations the early closure of international borders seems to lower the cases, but did not translate to real life saved. Numbers of nurses did protect lives, however, in countries with more than 6,000 nurses per million people saw significantly fewer deaths than those with half as many. Despite the researchers' insistence that lockdowns did not reduce death rates, they admitted the drastic measures were linked to lower numbers of COVID-19 cases, or 1984. The study compared mortality rates in cases in 50 different countries worst hit by the pandemic up until May 1st. Uh, only 33 of every million people had been killed, and that was uh, in the badly hit nations. That rate went uh, increased markedly. It is at 80 per million globally and still rising. Britain has seen 670 deaths per million. Again, if the figures are supposed to be believed. But I honestly believe if they could overinflate the death figures in Italy, and bear in mind they've said in this thing that they had the oldest people on average, then what do you suppose that would mean for Britain? I can guarantee you they're overinflating it to some degree. Even let's say if it's only 300%, let's say it's a third of the problem of Italy's, that would still mean that Britain has suffered a lot less deaths than the main fake stream media are making out to be. And it would be 
way less than what those goddamn politicians would be saying to us. I would love to read more of this, but I think it's just more of the same trope at this point. Uh, but there is one bit here I've just noticed. Government actions such as border closures, full lockdowns, and a high rate of COVID-1984 were not associated with statistically significant reductions in the number of critical cases or overall mortality. The number of days to any border closure was associated with the number of cases per million. So in other words, if we found out that this thing had come out sooner and we'd gone full lockdown earlier, we'd be out of it sooner, number one. And number two, we wouldn't have anywhere near as many deaths because obviously there wouldn't be that many people infected since most people would be staying indoors. And I made the point before, but if someone's infected, why not give them a mask instead? So it at least protects everyone else. Because in China, that's what they did. They would put masks on people who were infected. So then, if they have got COVID-1984, they would then be known to the public, so they would know to stay away. Whereas in the UK, we're all supposed to wear masks. And it's mainly because these people don't have, to put it bluntly, a fucking clue of how to deal with this. Now, I'm not making out I'm a medical expert. Far from it. I'm still the ordinary British patriot that I've always been. But surely there has to be a time where these people start using logic instead of being a bunch of idiots and realising... They have to realise that this doesn't work. The lockdowns don't work. In fact, you know what the lockdowns are doing now? They're actually making the economy of Britain much worse because of the amount of resources that are going into keeping people into lockdown. The fact it's hitting businesses, in particular small businesses, and it's just preventing overall interaction, which is making the place more miserable. Or maybe that's secretly what they want. Maybe this is actually a guise. Maybe this is uh, basically their attempt to control the growth of small businesses. Maybe it's part of some other plan to, to keep people from revolting. I've made the point pretty clear that... When they introduced their six, uh, no more than six law, in my humble opinion, I don't think it's so that they can prevent people from being affected by COVID-1984. I think it's to prevent revolts more than anything. And I, I, I don't think they understand that revolution's coming. I don't think they understand that if they keep down this path, people are just going to end up losing their shit. They're going to have had enough. And when they're sick of all the lockdowns, it's going to be a full-on revolution. And that it's it's only going to be them to blame. The way they've treated people, they've treated us like a bunch of friggin' idiots the whole time. And it's time we woke up in regards to this. Because I tell you what, if we don't start waking up and start thinking for ourselves, the government's going to start doing it for us. And trust me, that's not going to be a good thing. Now, the final article I've got is in regards to Tommy Robinson. It turns out there is something going on that's that's doing all right for Tommy. Um, and apparently, and this is from the NW email, apparently. Uh, well, that's what it's called. But it just says the mail up here. But anyway, Tommy Robinson allegedly court ordered to hand over footage investigating grooming gang in Borough. Actually, no, that wasn't the, the thing I wanted. That was one of the more negative things. No, sorry, the article I want to talk about was actually on The Independent. Man charged with ra racially aggravated death threats against Tommy Robinson. So, f and guess who's writing this? Lizzie Dipshit. That's right, Lizzie fucking Dearden. Finally, they have to 
they have to bite the bullet and actually come out in defense of Tommy Robinson. <laughs> oh, I never thought I'd see this day, Lizzie Dipshit. I really didn't. But I shall read this on, uh, this article. And I'll probably cover the other article of new, of uh, Tommy having to hand over footage investigating grooming gang in Barrow. And that was a court order, by the way. So we'll talk about that maybe on the next video or maybe some other time. But anyway, a man charged with racially aggravated deaths. A man has been charged with making death threats against Tommy Robinson motivated by his quote-unquote white English identity. No, no, no. Mohammed Abdul Bazir, 25, seems British to me, denied racially aggravated harassment and putting the English Defence League founder in fear of violence during a hearing at the Old Bailey. Uh, I will clear a few matters off. First off, Tommy wouldn't have been in fear of this prick. Tommy has dealt with Muslim pricks like this his entire life. He's dealt with constant harassment by the police, constant harassment by the government, constant harassment and threats from the Muslim community because of what he speaks about. The rape of Britain, the grooming gangs basically coming along and raping our, our women and children, talking about their so-called prophet, uh, Allah, sorry, I couldn't even get that right, <laughs> their so-called prophet Allah, who is supposed to be the person that they worship. And secondly, I guarantee you Abdul Bazir did not make threats because he was white English. He made the threats because, as I said, Tommy exposes Islam. He exposes the ideology of hate and rape and violence. He tells the truth on it. That's why people like Muhammad Abdul Bazir hate him so much. Not because he's white English. Anyway, the court heard that Mr. Bazir threatened to cut Robinson's neck off in a video posted online last year that he made several YouTube videos of of a similar nature. He allegedly threatened to beat Tommy Robinson, whose real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon, and made threatening comments towards his supporters as well as white English people. So clearly Tommy's the racist here, right? Just someone kill me now. Anyway, Bazir of uh, Mitcham in South London is accused of uploading videos on two occasions in September last year, appearing in court on Wednesday. He denied a charge of racially aggravated harassment involving fear of violence motivated by Robinson's white English racial identity. No, it's not because he's white English. Maybe he did do it because of that. Let's, you know what, let's just go with it for the sakes of argument. Let's just say that it really is because of his white English identity. I guarantee you, though, it's more because he speaks out against the religion of peace. But let's go ahead with this anyway. He further denied a charge of putting fear in of violence, which stated that he posted threatening videos and, and that he knew or ought to have known that it would cause Robinson fear of violence. And again, Robinson isn't afraid of violence. He has dealt with that shit all the time. Judge Mark Lucraft QC listed Bazir's trial for the 8th of March and warned that if he fails to attend, the case could go ahead in his absence. Bazir, who spoke only to enter his pleas, was granted bail until his trial date. Well, let's say that, as I said, he's done this for the sakes of his white English racial identity. I guarantee you. That if it was anyone else threatened because of their white racial identity, I guarantee you this news wouldn't even reach Google. This would not even reach the front page. This wouldn't even reach the back page. It wouldn't even be talked about. The only reason it's talked about 
is because it's Tommy Robinson. And they want to push the agenda, as per the usual, that, that Tommy is afraid of all of them, when he's not. Those who've actually done their research into Tommy Robinson, those who've actually been around Tommy Robinson, those who've shared a platform with Tommy Robinson, myself included, because I was up there, I believe it was uh, May, I believe, last year. So I have supported this this guy for over, over two years, I think. I started in 2018. But I know full well that Tommy would never be afraid of some Islamic piece of shit that is threatening violence. So, why is it they're trying to make out that he's afraid of this person or put him in fear of violence? And even if he was in fear of violence, I guarantee you it wouldn't be because of this this 25-year-old clown. Uh, good Lord. How long is this article? I'm just going to check this before I uh, go any further. Because I don't know how much longer my phone's going to hold out. Uh, I'm not 100% sure I can... Uh, Yeah, I'm not, I'll do this another time, but I will save this uh, this page before I forget. Uh, let's put in other bookmarks. There we are. That's all saved, and we'll talk about that next time. The uh, one where he was court ordered to hand over footage. So. Obviously, those are the three articles. I will link them in the description below once the video is uploaded. Because I can't do it on my phone for whatever reason. Or maybe I can, and I, it's just too much hassle, I don't know. But I'll get this uploaded as soon as possible. Uh, probably see you in about four or five weeks time again with another video. And I think these people need to seriously wake the hell up. Let me tell the Mint something, and the clown who thought that this country needs a diversity coin. It doesn't need your rigmarole, your load of bullshit forced down our throats. We're not interested in the diversity and inclusion of it. We don't need this progressive bullshit in our society. What we need is hope. What we need is a different government. Because Boris Johnson, who we thought was actually going to do us a huge favour, has done a massive injustice for us. He has not helped this country in any way, shape or form, other than the fact that he said that we have left the EU. But he's still leaving ourselves massively weakened because the twat isn't putting his foot down saying, you better give us the best deal, even though we don't really want a deal, to be fair, or we walk away from the table. No, he's just as weak as Theresa the Treasoner May, and has basically left the back door open. But what I find even funnier is the EU stupidity in that they are still threatening us with no deal. When ironically, this is exactly what we wanted. We don't want to deal with the EU. I mean, the last time I checked, none of us, none of us voted in the EU referendum so that we could then say, we'll make a deal with you later. No, 17.4 million people voted to leave the EU unconditionally and without question. In the biggest referendum of our people's history. And yet, we're still foxtrotting around the situation. Well, Boris Johnson. I suggest you grow a pair of balls. I suggest you grow a spine. 
And I suggest you tell the EU exactly what they can do with their fucking threats of a no-deal Brexit. If they want a no-deal, we'll give it to them. But they will be so much worse off than we will be. Because if you don't start pulling your finger out, if you don't actually start doing your job, Boris Johnson, I know it's a, a hard concept for you politicians, doing your job properly, doing what the British people asked for you to do. But if you don't do it, we're going to get more people in who will do their job. We're going to get people in who actually care about the country. Because it will be quite apparent that you don't give two shits about us. My name is Abatha Rex. And I thank you for watching. And I am, as always, very bad news for our corrupt establishment, the Muslim grooming gangs. And of course, most importantly, those COVID-1984 pencil pushers. Catch you later.